I am going to attempt some shot glasses. That's actually one of the only things that people have said, do you have any? And I've had to say no to, so <laughs> shot glasses it is. You and me, babe, you and me, babe, you're just nothing else like you. We're ready to go. This is a little bigger than what I think it needs to be, um, but it's also a lot more clay than I thought I have a pound was. Apparently, I'm not well versed with how much you can throw with half a pound, so I put a little food on it. And since I have all these wedged up pieces of clay, I'm thinking a lot of them will get a little feet. Although I was falling quickly in love with these little feet, it became very clear that if I wanted to have some without the little foot, I was going to have to change my strategy. Let me try that again, but this time I want to throw these off the hump uh, because I think that'll be easier. The question on mine and everyone else's mind is, can I get them to be the same size if I throw them off of the hump? Let's see. This is what I'm excited about. Oh my gosh. I love him so much. Oh my gosh, Emily, don't tip him over. I love him so much, but apparently I cannot trim a level bottom off of the hump yet. So, half pound, aiming for this. Here, it became apparent why people generally put the foot on after they throw the bowl of something like this. One very, very clear thing here. If I throw the bowl first and then the foot, then the hole in the center gets deeper. When I started collaring in the foot, the hole dropped. So I can't really collar that in and play with it. Like if I had cut it off right there, there's still a hole. So next. So when I had to cut the top off of this one and it gave me half the amount of clay that I was pulling out for the bowl, I began to understand how you could make that hole dropping to your advantage instead of to your detriment. <laughs> okay, two things. Uh, uh, half pound of clay is too much to get this size. I'm still kind of having to cut these off of a hump per se. Uh, the other thing is you can't really make the bowl first and you can't really make the stem first. You kind of have to do it all at one time. Um, just keeping in mind that when you press in the stem, the bowl is going to get bigger. Sweet little 
butterfly. Go over here and make bands. On something that small, you really need your fingers pointed up. And it's a whole lot easier to do that here than it is to do that here. So I'm gonna go back to throwing off the hump and see where that gets me. These are cute, but they're a whole lot of work. <laughs> now it's time for a word from our sponsor. Little fairy. We love her. And she has a little friend that she loves to play with right there on the back of her roof. And we like her best with her little stand where she can write notes to you and you can write notes to her. So go check her out now at collistimley.com under Fairyland. And she could go home with you. Now back to our show. It took me a second to get my feet back underneath me on the hump, but it became very, very clear. You've got to go back and forth between throwing the bowl and throwing the stem. And you have to get the narrowness of the stem down before you finish out the bowl. Okay, I'm not sure how much I have to tell you, except that this clay is way too wet. <laughs> what I have come to is dropping a hole as if for a bowl. And then narrowing in below it. That hole will then drop and it will give you a deeper hole with more clay to work with. So then I can start uh, throwing and I have found throwing off the front to be more advantageous because it keeps the rim in check a little bit better than throwing off the back. Other thing is, when throwing this small, my walls are getting a lot thinner than what I'm used to. So I keep pulling it off halfway through throwing it. And it's like, ah, are you kidding me? Um, so anyway, once I get some decent walls going, my, um, on this one, my, uh, hole has gotten way too deep. And the only way to remedy that, that I have found is to push down on the inside. Okay. So that's better, but it made my made my pot wonky, but we'll deal with that here in a minute because it's probably going to get wonkier. And there it goes again. Then I can bring up my stand here. Oh, stem, I guess is what you call it. With my stemware. I can form my stemware stem and make that good flat, um, the bottom of the flat part right here. Make the bottom of the flat part here. Make the bottom of the stem here. And now I've got this nice wonky little thing, but that's okay because the next step is to define and he's got a twist in the top there so this one's probably not gonna make it I don't know. That kind of worked. <laughs> uh, and that's the basic shape. Now, if 
that was the whole shape, that would be fantastic. I could call that done. But the ones that I've been doing are a lot thinner than that. And, and not thinner. Uh, they're just enough different that this won't match them. And what I've been going for is for that match. I have seven that look quasi like this, but not four of them match yet. <laughs> All of that to say, I feel like if you use the fact that when you pull the stem in, it's going to um, drop your hold that a little bit more. Use that to your advantage and you'll be much, much, much better off. They just don't get much more adorable than that. Oh my gosh. Okay, look at you! <sighs> He's precious. All right, now as far as cutting off the hump is concerned, that has always been a struggle for me and why I don't often cut, uh, throw off the hump. I have found during this practice that if I make a channel and take a wire tool, Put the wire tool in the channel and start the wheel spinning. Pull the wire tool to the middle and leave it there. So it's in the middle. I know it's let go. Uh, hands. Ta-da! That's pretty good there, Em. Alrighty. Last one. This is the final count. Uh, there are nine. I'm gonna turn these guys over as soon as possible onto their little rims so that their little bottoms can dry out. Dry out. And once they have some decent bottoms, we'll tackle that. <laughs> Figuring it out. <laughs> so I really thought I was gonna have an issue with these bottoms because they're so gnarly. But it turns out, all you need is just sure form. This is actually a uh, drywall tool as well. So you can just get these at the hardware store. You don't have to go to any kind of um, pottery place or at all. But you just shave it down with the sure form because the sure form pretty much covers the entire bottom of these. I know to control, drying process, but I've never done anything like this with a really thick bottom on it and a really thin top on it. So I'm really not sure how well it's going to work. <laughs> uh, put them upside down. I put uh, plastic around the rim and the body of the pot because their bottoms are so thick. Uh, they really need all the air that is escaping from the pot to come out of the bottom first. Um, otherwise, as the top dries, it shrinks and it will shrink in a way that does not allow for the bottom of it to shrink as it dries and it will crack. So, controlling the drying process, hopefully. These little guys are all through drying. There's that kind, and there's this kind. Uh, oh, oh, and the other ones. One sec. These were the little half pound ones, and they've already come out of the bisque. That's exciting. Uh, and they did really well. So, um, but you can see that's where I was learning about that whole drop after you drop the hole. 
Um, so that is a very clean look of what it looks like um, as you collar in this area, the hole just comes with it. Figured it out. Figured it out. These look great. Seem to have dried pretty okay. If they're gonna crack, they will probably do so right here. You know, you don't know until you know. And sometimes you just gotta figure it out. That's what we do here on this channel is figure things out. Thanks for coming, everybody. they dry needs to come through the foot of the pot. Stupid. I really want to show you what it looks like on the inside. Oh my gosh, you're massive next to those two. I didn't think it was that big. It's kind of too big. Way too big. To be... Well, they're a Texas-sized shot glass. That's stupid. It's got a booger on the bottom of it. Superman's home.